Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today what I have for you is episode 2 of my Football Manager 23 save with FC Eindhoven. If you've not already checked out episode 1, please make sure to go do so. But thank you very much to everybody who has already checked out that video, dropped a like and a comment, all that sort of stuff. If you do go on to enjoy today's video, please make sure to drop a like on there for me. If you could channel it 25 likes on today's episode, that would be massively appreciated. Subscribe if you are new as well. We are now on the road to 700 subscribers. Thank you very much for 600 your support as always is massively appreciated don't forget as well to drop a comment in down in the comment section down below to help boost the video in the youtube algorithm today what i have for you is well we'll have an update of the transfers that have happened so far some potential contract business as well and then we'll have the first two matches of our competitive season because we've gone through the whole of pre-season and i must say signing players seems to be very hard the youngest player we've signed is 34 years of age Let's get into it. So we'll start out then with player departures. Cass Faber has joined Dirk Grafschap on a permanent deal. He was on and think a non-contract with us. He was never really going to be good enough. I think he was two and a half star quality ability, three and a half star potential, something like that. Just never really going to be good enough. So we let him leave the club on a free transfer. Maruna Amevo, I want to say is how you pronounce his name, has also left the club on a permanent basis as well. We got £138,000 to him, uh, for him. Sorry, he's also gone to the Graf Shop. They are in the same league as us, so we'll probably come up against him at some point this season as well. But at 30 years of age, he was on over £1,000 a week. I'm happy to get him off the wage bill and to get £130,000 fee for him. I think that's a very nice piece of business in my opinion. Piotr Kestins has also gone out on loan for the remainder of the campaign. He's gone out on loan to uh, be a shot over in Belgium. I think the Challenger Pro League is the top division over in Belgium. We got nearly a £10,000 loan fee for him as well. Two and a half star current ability, four star potential on £1,100 a week. I think they're paying 80% of his wages. Yeah, they're paying, we're only paying, uh, what's that, £250 a week towards his wages. So I don't mind that whatsoever. And he's gone out on loan for the remainder of the campaign. And the final departure for now then was our reserve striker Jason Pigments he's gone out on a permanent transfer as well on a free transfer to another team who are in our division two star current ability I think he was three star potential never really going to be good enough as you can see here the scout report is only signed as a last resort but they're all the departures let's get into our signings because there's not been many now, don't get me wrong, I did want to make a lot more signings than what I have made in the end. It is just the two signings in the end, starting out with Albert Docker. He's only recently coming in as well on a one-year contract, 39 years of age. He comes in as another central midfielder, defensive midfield option, left-footed, fairly balanced as well. He comes in on a free transfer after being released by Cornella in the Spanish Federation 1B division, whatever that means. He's on just over a £1,000 a week, and if he plays 15 matches in the league, then he does get an extra year on his contract. And the other player we have signed is another defensive midfielder, left-footed as well, Pierrick Valdivia. He's come in on a free transfer. Again, very similar to the other player that I've just signed. I've completely forgotten his name. He's on £1,800 per week, though, and if he plays 10 league matches, he gets an extra year as well. I don't think the aim this season is really to get promoted. He's come in from EA e uh, e e Gwingpagamp probably butchered that, but over in League Duh. I don't think the aim this season is to get promoted, so he'll come in for this season. We might sell him next summer, or we'll just have to wait and see how things go this season, but again, looks like a very good, well-rounded player. He's more of a defensive ball-winning midfielder, and the other guy that we've signed, his name has completely forgotten me, Albert Dorker. He's more of a playmaker type player. So, as of right now, we do have two players for every position, which is very nice. Our squad is looking good. Like I said, we've got two players for every position. Some players are loans. We've currently got four loans. I don't know what the loan rules are over in the second division over in Holland. Also, we managed to get uh, Oostenbrink on a permanent contract as well. He was on a non-contract and some teams came in for offers for him. So we offered him a three-year contract on £650 a week. He has decided to sign that. He's more of a defensive midfielder, but he can do a very good job at centre-half. So for now, he's going to find himself slotting in at centre-half. Apart from that, not really too much to update you with. Uh, we sold just over a 1,000 season tickets, I think. And apart from that, I think that's it. Oh, pre-season, yes. We had a 2-1 win away at Homburg, a 2-1 win at home to Munster, a 1-0 defeat at home to Gil Vicente, who are a team over in Portugal, so I don't think that's a bad result whatsoever. We had a 5-0 win away at West Hook, a 5-0 win at home to Dessel, a 6-1 win away at Ar Capelen FC, a 6-0 win at home to Dovo, a 3-0 win at home to Tonisberg, and a 4-1 win at home to RC Harold Becke. In today's episode, then, we'll have FC then Bosch away from home. We'll also have Willem 2 at home as well. Looking forward to it. It seems like we play every Friday. 
I didn't know that was a thing, but it seems like we're playing every Friday over in Holland, just the one game a week as well. And it looks like we do play every team twice, which is what I like to see as well. And then I presume you play every team twice, and then at some point in the middle of the May, that's when playoffs probably starts. If we can get into the top eight this season, I think that would be a very big achievement. Obviously, you can't get relegated on here because I don't have the Dutch third division on Football Manager without downloading a database. But there is a lot of teams on here that I do recognise. So we're going to have some good games this season. I'm not really too sure what Jong means. I'm going to presume it's second because there's Jong Ajax, Jong AZ and John PSV and Utrecht. I presume they're all second teams maybe. I'm not really too sure but either way they could be very good this season. I've, I have heard of some of these teams I like what I say so let's just see how we get on this season and we'll take it from next season. The first season's going to be more of a learning curve whereas the second season's hopefully going to be a bit more of more of a challenge for promotion and all that sort of stuff. Let's get into our first game then of the season. Here we have it then, here's how we line up but for our first match, away to FC Den Bosch. Just the one change from our normal team, Valdivia comes into the side because Dorka is currently dealing with some sort of a knee injury. He's back in full training tomorrow but he's clearly no any fit enough to start this game. Valdivia only came in a couple of days ago so he's had no pre-season. His match sharpness is all the way down there so at some point Azagare or uh, Hubers will be coming onto the pitch. Hubers is a player we've just had to call up from the reserve team as well. I don't think he's played yet throughout this season but we like up then with Bertrams in goal, a back four of Eugenia, uh Piendberg, Ustenbrink, Rigo, Valdivia, Van Dorm, Perisin. Uh, we've also got in the 10 roll um, De Kia's maker. On the left, we've got Dahlus, and then up front, we've got Diaby. I am going to struggle to pronounce some of these players' names, so if I start referring to them as just their number then I apologise, but I don't really speak too much Dutch. Apart from me not being able to speak to a lot of these players because they don't really understand me, I'm excited to get underway for today's game. We do need to give out some squad numbers. Val de Viet can have squad number 28, and then Hubers is a youngster, so we'll give him some at random, like 46. Why not? 46 for a youth. I mean, he's not even a youth player. I think he's 20 years of age. He's two-star current ability, so he might get on the pitch at some point today. Do I recognise any of their players? I recognise the name Zalalem, but I don't think that... Is it, do you to play for Arsenal maybe yeah I don't really recognize any of these players actually looking at players like Andy Cook and Andy Cook would not be interested in joining under any circumstances because we don't have the financial muscle so clearly this second division in Holland is about National League standard that's what I can kind of gauge maybe National League North slash South so the jump up in quality is clearly very high they're going with a 4-3-3 narrow so we need to look to exploit them in at the wide areas we'll get underway for today's game there's just over 3,000 in attendance but like I say this is an away game if we can finish in that top eight that would be lovely I'm just going to put an early instruction on to tell them to focus to play in the wide areas because they're looking very narrow 10 minutes in still nil nil well, throughout pre-season, I had the game on only commentary and replays only. So, there has been a goal here. For who, though, I'm not really too sure. So, we're just going to watch it. But the goal is for us. Unfortunately, I've completely forgotten to turn that off. It's Dalhouse driving down the right-hand side. Gets the shot off. Off the post and in. Apologies about that. That won't happen again. I completely forgot about doing that. That's the cons of not playing football manager for so long. That I've forgotten completely to turn that off. No wonder there was no highlights so early on. But we take the lead inside at the first 10 minutes it's in today's game the perfect start to life as the FC Eindhoven manager as Dalhouse coming forward once again ball into the box looking for Diaby that is cleared only as far as Perry's in ball back into the box and it's 2-0 Lamin Diaby Fadiga with the goal and it's two goals in very quick succession hopefully this is a sign of things to come if we can just go around steamrolling every team that'd be very nice but we're currently top of the league it's a great ball in a poor clearance really a first time ball in and a great header from the RB. the keeper should definitely be doing be, be doing better with that one but it's fc was it den bosch that we're playing nil fc eindhoven two lovely stuff as they've got a throw in here on this right hand side they're looking to build up an attack we're looking to just kind of keep it solid for now get through to half time at two nil potentially get a third but we can't really afford to concede here this would be probably one of the worst times to concede good defending though from van dorm and now dalhouse loses out though on this occasion ball is clipped forward over the top we can't get on the end of it it's conning's in on goal shoots big save though from bertrand's that is a very very nice save and he keeps us not in the game but he keeps the score at 2-0 free kick for us here dalhouse with the shot 
onto the roof of the net there. Good opportunity for him. Unfortunately, doesn't quite find the back of the net on this occasion. Look at the statistics. We're absolutely battering them so far. They've got a throw in now. They choose to go back and the ball is lumped forward. We should be able to deal with this one though. Rigo goes all the way back into Bertrams. As more time goes on, I'll probably get used to how you pronounce a lot of these players' names. I, I do apologise if I am pronouncing them wrong, like what I keep saying, but I really, really don't want to be offending people. This is the problem when you've never managed outside of England before. You struggle to, well, pronounce foreign players' names. As De Kia's maker coming forward here, loses out though. Van Dorm, Diaby now, goes out wide into Persin. Ball into the box is blocked. It's still with the ball though here. Ball back in, and that's three. It's Brian De Kia's maker with the goal, and it's FC Den Bosch nil, FC Eindhoven 3 with 33 minutes on the clock. We have tripled our lead in today's game. Brilliant football from us. They just can't deal with us right now. Telling them to focus the play in the wide areas. They're really struggling to deal with it. De Kia's maker, who originally was going to be playing as the deep line playmaker this season before we signed the two old men. And he's found himself now playing as a number 10. And he's on the score sheet on the opening day of the season. We're top of the league. This has been a brilliant start to the save. Nearly 65% of the ball as well. We've absolutely dominated them in the statistics. Very, very impressive with that half. It's three nil at half time you are doing brilliantly now throughout pre-season I was playing a lot of trialists and a lot of them were only playing 60 70 minutes so I will be interested to see how everyone's fitness does get on but the fact we're only playing once a week every Friday doesn't really concern me too much about the fitness as Diaby's hit the post there he's a man who we've got in on loan at this moment in time but he seems to be causing a real threat for the opposition now like I said I don't know if FC Denbosch are any good they could be the worst team in the league so beating them 3 nil is potentially might not be anything to be too concerned about but Persin has currently got a tight hamstring we'll give him another five minutes then we'll look to make some substitutions as well I think you're allowed to make five subs three opportunities and you're allowed to select 12 I'm pretty sure that's how it is but with 65 minutes on the clock we are now going to look to make some of them substitutions Persin's on a yellow card so he is going to come off we are going to get a uh, Rotier on on that right hand side we're going to play him as a winger in terms of other changes as well I mean a genia is the only player not having a good game here so he's going to come off for seed off he's a very very good right back option Jensen is going to come on for Ooston Brink as well as a left sided centre half we're going to get Koku on on the left side for Dalhouse who scored the opening goal and final change of the game I mean we might as well get Hubers on we're going to bring uh, but that means we would have to change formation slightly, so we're not going to do that. Final change of the game, we are going to bring on... We'll bring on Azagari for Val, Valdivia, because obviously Valdivia has um, not really played any football throughout pre-season. So, yeah, we'll do them as our changes. 25 minutes on left on the clock. Five subs now on the pitch. Everyone's getting a nice amount of game time. I'm very happy with the way things are going. 15 minutes to go, still 3-0. Free kick for us here. The Kia's maker with the shot off the crossbar. We've come close now with two free kicks. That one, the closer of the two with 10 minutes left on the clock we've nearly made it for there I was actually just looking at the league table it looks like a lot of the games right now are drawing and a lot of them seem to be nil nil I'm not really too sure what's going on there but as of right now, we're absolutely cruising. As the ball's played over the top there, there's a load of confusion at the back. Diaby with the shot. We've hit the crossbar again. A big, big opportunity there for Diaby for Diga to get his second goal of the match. He hasn't been able to take it, and now we've got a throw in. That is cleared away, though. Come on, we really want a clean sheet in this game. Ball hammered forward. Surely offside there. Moller now driving forward. Goes out wide into Roos. A little bit of time for him here on their right hand side. Ball into the box is well cut out by the substitute as Agari. Now we'll look to build up a counter attack of our own Koku chasing this on the left hand side on off the bench into the penalty area he goes he shoots he doesn't he crosses it's off the post and somehow that's not gone in the back of the net Van der Steen I've no idea how he's managed to keep that one out of the back of the net but with two and a half minutes left on the clock seed off now with another really really poor throw and that's twice now he's done the exact same thing I don't really know what he's doing there but Rigo now a little bit of space from here can he find Koku he does he takes it on the half turn as Zagari now loses it though in a poor area but Jansen with some good recovery and defending there Koku now looking into De Kia's maker into the box brought down referee that is surely a penalty the liner doesn't have his flag wave so I don't really know why it's saying that but that looked like a penalty to me before the advantage was played. Surely that should have been a spot kick. If that would have been a draw and we'd have been not given a penalty for that, I would have been fuming. But because we're 3-0 up, it doesn't really matter all too much. The key is making out. Swings the ball out wide here into Seedorf. This should hopefully send out a message to the rest of the league that if you want to play narrow against us, we're definitely going to exploit it. As we've scored again here, I don't think it is offside. It's Brian De Kia's maker with the goal. It's FC Denbosch nil. FC Eindhoven 4. It's a dominant display on the opening day of the 
the season. We're absolutely battering them. The media prediction at the start of the season was eighth. So I'm going to presume that the team we're playing against here is not very good. But the key is maker with a beautiful poacher's instinct finish. And that should about be enough to see us through to the end of the game. Full time, 4-0 win. Brilliant way to start the series. Let's go back it up now with another win in our next game. Let's get into it. Here we have it then, here's how we line up for our first home game of the season, this time we're at home to Willem at 2. We line up in a 4-2-3-1 formation, the only change to the whole squad is Dorka is now back on the bench for the reserve centre, I can't for the life of me remember his name, but that means we line up then with Bertrams in goal, a back four of Eugenia, Pienberg, Oostenbrink and Rigo, Van Dorm and Valdivia in the midfield, Perzin on the right, Dalhouse on the left and we've got De Kia's maker in behind Diaby for Diga as well. Very, very strong squad and there's no real reason for me to change it based on the last performance as well. Dorker does want a squad number. He's going to get squad number... Um, as a deep line playmaker, we'll give him squad number 16, he's a central midfielder, it doesn't really matter all too much, we still got the 10 and number 11 shirt available, because I thought we were actually going to sign some better players, we didn't in the end, so they're kind of just sitting around doing nothing, I believe we actually tried to sign this Awusu guy, I'm pretty sure we literally, about 10 seconds ago in real life, just before we went into this game, we cancelled trying to sign him, because he's not actually as good as what we originally thought, I don't recognise any of their players though, so let's get into it, they're Third in the league, I think they won their opening game, so certainly not going to be an easy one. This could be an early potential top of the table clash. We'll tell them that we have the faith and belief in them to make a difference out there. Not really too many players getting motivated by what I have to say, but the more we keep winning, the more that will happen. I seem to have a bit of a problem at the moment with the face pack. Um... If you don't already know, basically I lost all my files on my computer, so some are loading, some aren't. I'll try and get that sorted for the next episode, but for now you've just got a couple of face packs. I'm not really too sure why some are there and some aren't, but we are now underway for today's game at home to Willem 2. Bertrams with this free kick then, goes short into Pienberg. Van Dorm now picks it up, a very versatile player. Valdivia now picks it up, driving forward on this left-hand side. He goes out wide into Rigo, not really got an option down the line though, so he goes back into Oostenbrink. He finds Van Dorm. can he slot it through, Persin now, driving down our right hand side, can he get a ball into the box, he goes back into Eugenia, loads of space here, Persin now, once again, back into Eugenia, ball into the box, looking for De Kia's maker, and it's his third goal of the season, this man just cannot stop scoring, and we are absolutely cruising right now, five minutes into our opening home game of the season, in front of our 1,500 season ticket holders, Persin goes back into Eugenia, he takes a touch, ball into the box, it's a really, really difficult head he manages to guide it in though at that near post with just less than five minutes on the clock the keeper stands no chance apparently that wasn't even a shot on target according to the statistics there but either way we're ahead lovely stuff but they do have a corner pretty much instantly here Svensson will put a right foot out swing it into the box it's a deep ball in towards the back post we deal with it originally but the shot comes in and that is an absolutely fantastic finish there from Mateus Vereth there and about 10 minutes after we take the lead, Willem second, our back level. Really, really disappointing. We dealt with the initial phase of the set piece, but it's come from the second play, really, hasn't it? The second phase, keeper stands absolutely no chance. It's a brilliant finish. We should be getting out, though, to deal with that much better than what we were. And Willem 2 equalised just 10 minutes after we take the lead. Well, approaching half-time, nothing has happened in this game apart from the two goals. Couple yellow cards in there as well, but it is 1-1 at the break. We're going to thrash the arms. This isn't good enough. Absolutely unacceptable. Get underway for the second half. If it's not changed in the next 10 minutes or so, that's when we'll look to make some substitutions. We'll give them some encouragement as well. We've got a corner here, Valdivia, with a left foot out swing it into the box. The keeper's missed it, and it's an easy tap-in at the back post for Lamin Diaby Fadiga. His second goal for the football club, like I mentioned in the last game, He's actually only on loan with us, but he's our only perm uh, not permanent, he's our only striker, I think, at the club. We've got players who can play striker, but that is a real poacher's instinct finish, shocking goalkeeping, but we're not going to complain whatsoever. We are back in front once again, and now we need to control the game, see it out, be streetwise, be smart, and all that sort of stuff, as we will now look to make some substitutions. We do have a lot of tired players out there. Pretty much the players who didn't come off in the last game will probably be the players who come off in this one, but Dalhouse on a yellow card, on a 6.1 as well. Koku's going to come on on that left-hand side. In terms of some more substitutions, Valdivia's tired so Dork is going to come on for him we're also going to bring on uh, we'll bring Cedar on, mm, oh, Genie's having a good game, right, we'll get Jensen on then for Pienneberg and we'll put him over on the left side of the defence, we'll get Borgeus on for Rigo as well at left back, can they both play 
in them roles. Yeah, they can. So we'll stick them that way around. Final change of the game. I think we want to get Van Dorm off, really. And we'll bring Seed off on. Seed off can play as a DM. So he's going to come on in that role there. 25 minutes left on the clock. Fingers crossed we can see this one out. I think we've got a free kick here on the edge of the box. It'll be Koku to take on off the bench. It's a good position here. He strikes it and he finds the back of the net. Ozan Koku on off the bench with a number seven on his back. Does a cartwheel as well. Brilliant free kick into the back of the net. I've just seen down there the only commentary thing saying that's his first ever goal for the football club. So he must be a player who has only recently joined the club. It's 3-1 though to FC Eindhoven. And if we keep this up, we're going to have an absolutely unbelievable season. In front of our 1,500 fans, we have had the perfect start to this season. We're not done here. De Kia's maker now. Finds Perizin on this right-hand side. He shoots himself this this time, though, his shot goes just wide. Good opportunity for him there, but we've just over 10 minutes to go. It's still 3-1 to us. Well, we have absolutely controlled this game. Another three points in the bag. The perfect start to today's series. 3-1 win after a 4-0 win in our opening two games. Fingers crossed, though, we can keep it up. Like I said, I don't really know too much about the Dutch second division, so I don't know which players are good, which uh, no, which teams are good, sorry, which teams are bad, but Willem won their first game. Lots of teams still haven't played their matches as well, so I'm not really too sure what is going on there. We'll advance forward through a couple more days, see where we actually are in the league table, but after scoring seven goals, only conceding one, winning both the games, I can't see us really being anywhere other than first at this moment in time. We'll give it a couple of days to advance just to let all the other teams get up to date with their games i mean some teams still haven't played but i think the only team that can catch us is mvv um i don't know if they're any good or not but we're gonna leave it top of the table positive six goal difference we got absolutely unbelievable player here in brian de Kia's maker he's on a three-year contract as well looks like a very very good player Albert Dorker has also set a record appearance for FC, Eindhoven, FC Eindhoven's oldest ever player, which is brilliant to see. I am going to leave it there, though, for today's video. If you have enjoyed, please make sure to drop a like on there for me. If you could try it 25 likes, as I said at the start of today's video, that would be massively appreciated. Subscribe if you are new as well. We are on the road to 700 subscribers. Thank you once again for 600. But please make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already with that post notification bell on. It's free to do so, and it does massively help out as one of our has just picked up an injury. That's fine. Don't forget as well to get a comment in down in the comment section down below to help boost the video in the YouTube algorithm. Thank you very much for watching today's video. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you all very soon for another episode. Peace.